into the recap show. We're going to do it all in one take here. We used to do it like this uh, back in the day when I uh, had things a little bit easier set up. Now we're going to just roll through it here live on Twitch. Uh, start us off, Bucks, Browns. Bucks take a three point lead to start. Browns jump out seven to three, make it 14 to three. Tampa does pull within the score at the half, 14 to six, our score at half. Tampa ties it up. Tied at 14. Cleveland takes a touchdown lead. Cleveland takes a two score lead. Tampa cannot come through. So Tampa dropping yet another game. Cleveland's going to pull this one out. So AFC North minus Pittsburgh winning games this week. Uh, it's been such a tough season for Tampa Bay. Dropping an, another game. This one not on the stream. Uh, Desmond Ritter, the best thing. The old man Tom Brady. Uh, and obviously that's not reliable. But we'll take a look at the scoring summary and see how we got here. To start, Giovanni Bernard, 14-yard touchdown catch and a George Pickens, t- Pickens touchdown catch. Uh, Godwin being the only touchdown for Tampa on the day. Peoples-Jones getting the fourth quarter uh, Browns touchdown. That did mean the difference, but Lamb obviously getting another touchdown or another field goal to put him two scores up. So even if they had managed to score on the goal line, it would not have mattered. Into the player stats here, Brady, one touchdown, one pick, only 55% completion percentage, 296 yards. Um, just not a good day at the office again. It's it's how it always is for him. He's just had a bad season. But Ritter, on the other end of this duel, three touchdowns, one pick, uh, 66 percent completion percentage isn't exactly elite, but it is much better. And despite throwing 12 less passes, he only has 22 less yards. So definitely a better average for sure. 8.3 yards per attempt. Really good day for the rookie. Nick Chubb, 4.3 on the ground, 69 yards. That's nice. G. Brian Bernard, good in relief as well. Fournette had a pretty rough day too. Peoples-Jones, 110 in the touchdown. Uh, he's definitely going for that Calvin or the uh, Russell Gage award. Been really good. Pretty much throughout the season, Godwin and Fournette had good days through the air for Tampa, as well as Mike Evans and Ertz. I mean, they all had pretty good days. Uh, but Chip Pickens, the rookie, getting another touchdown. Had a nice season so far. Lazard, 46 yards. The Lizard King himself. For sacks allowed here, Jack Conklin. Ugh. Four sacks allowed. I wonder if that's a big day for Shaq Barrett. Um, but Sailor allows one. Tevin Jenkins, Tristan Works each allow one. Brandon Smith, the rookie, leads away in tackles at 11. Hargrave, two tough losses. A few guys here at one. Four the sacks now. Yep, Shaq Barrett with four sacks. Miles Garrett with one. Nassib one. Dean and uh, Dunk is two with a half sack each. Grant Helpit, LJ Fort getting the picks. We're going to have a legend here. LJ Fort. Carl Davis, Caleb Farley, two deflections. Love, Taki Taki, Gregory, Jim Davis with one. Davis does get injured. I'll uh, we'll see if that's serious for them. Uh, and yeah, kicking here. No long kicks, so everybody made the kicks. Good job, everybody involved. Uh, fun thing here, a good day for Cameron Johnson. He's used a little more than they'd like, but he's pretty good. 52.5 and that average, one side to 20. Uh, no punt, no punt returns is fine. Eight yard long, nothing crazy. And yeah, that's going to do it. Browns take game one, 24-14, and we will keep rolling into the next one. Oh, hey, Hude. How, how's it going, buddy? How you feeling? Hude. <laughs> Alrighty. Next game up. Houston versus Miami. Oh, shit. I forgot to do the two upgrade. I was sitting here thinking, it's like, God, I feel like I did everything. Two upgrade I did not do. All right, we're doing that now. Okay. I'm going to peek behind the old curtain here. I'm I'm holding up fine today, you know. You're good. Yeah, I was bound to lose some games eventually. Uh, you know, I didn't want to. I didn't want to lose the Colts, that's for sure. But, uh, you know, you're gonna lose games this season. At least I avoided the 11-0 curse. 
uh, you know, that's that's something I definitely didn't want to have uh, lo- looming over me. Uh, so, honestly, I don't think considered it could have been worse. Uh, defense so injured, and um, I can I can cope by saying that, you know, if my defense was less injured, I would have been fine. Let's see, awareness eighty four. Do need to hit his fucking weights? My God, throw power of eighty six. We'll leave it for now. He doesn't need it. Change of direction, 80. Vision of 79. Okay, it looks like his... Yeah, it looks like his rushing stats remain the same. Break sack, B3. Throwing pressure of 80. Five. We'll hope that doesn't go, doesn't need to go down for him because that's tough. It's actually going to be a negative upgrade then. Short accuracy at the 94. Wow. Beat him actually up to 91. Deep accuracy up to 89. All right. Well, something's got to go down. Let's play action to 84. All right. Throw under pressure. Go down until he gets below 80. There it is. All right. Minus two on that. I'll throw on the run. I could have knocked that down. Okay, well, he's an 84. Mission accomplished. All right. Well, that upgrade's done. Late, but done. All right, Texans time. Texans, Dolphins, two and eight teams coming at you. Obviously, I mean, so that's the funny thing about the Dolphins using upgrade now is they can kind of have a lost season. But they, uh, I mean, still the chances of the if they win, they're in the same spot as the Patriots are. And I'd like the Dolphins to be a playoff team more than I would the Patriots. Uh, offense taken to you, Prussia, if you're still around. Still recording? Yeah, we we recorded through that. Houston takes a seven nothing lead. No receivers, no problem. Ten to nothing lead. Ten to seven now for Miami. Fourteen to thirteen at half. Miami now opened up a four point lead, but Houston takes a three point lead back. Miami up to three. Houston up four. Miami takes the lead back, and Houston falls short. Oh, man, they should have kicked it. The, they were only up three. What happened, Houston? Oh, no. Well, I mean, that's a good loss for Houston. You know, hey, you want to get the number one pick, right? Uh, but Houston in a back-and-forth shootout here with Miami. We'll take a look at the scoring summary, see how it all shakes down. Elijah Mitchell gets the run to start us off. Devontae Parker uh, kind of sandwiching between some field goals for Houston. So that's our 14-13 score. Um, wait. No, that's only... That's 13-7. They score right away in that with a Najee Harris 60-yard run right away in the third quarter. Uh, and then Keyshawn Johnson comes out of retirement for him. Uh, <laughs> Devontae Parker, his second touchdown of the day, Cleve Raymond, and Will Fuller gives the uh, decisive touchdown. Both quarterbacks really balling out to uh, with uh, six quarters and completion percentage. Uh, 234 yards and three touchdowns, 8.3 yards per attempt. But te- Jacoby Brissett, I mean, 438 yards, two touchdowns and a pick. Jacoby Brissett keeps the ball in, in the ACFL. Uh, Could have used a little bit better completion percentage and obviously not throwing a pick, but oof, what a day. Najee Harris gets out 150 yards on the ground, 9.3 yards per attempt. Obviously 60 of that coming on the big one, but still 15 for 90. That's still a hell of a day at the office, so uh, nice for him to see that. Elijah uh, Mitchell, my plus gas can get involved. They ran the ball a ton, Miami did, and they ran it well. Khalif Raymond, six, or nine for 169 at a touchdown. A big day for him, leading the way for the Texans. Um, is this the real steal? <laughs> anyway, uh, Nelson Aguilar gets injured, uh, and Keyshawn... I did. I was joking. Okay, that's not the real Keyshawn, but yeah, uh, Jake Ferguson. Go. Let's see. Sacks allowed. Dieter, Tunsil, and Suamalu. He's. It's this is last year Suamalu. Okay, this is not last year Suamalu. All pro Isaac Suamalu. This is this is Texan Suamalu. He's back to real life. You know, Jermaine Johnson. Oh, an injury. An injury to him could open the door for someone else to win Defensive Rookie of the Year. 
because he has been consistent. Didn't get a sack today. Two tackle losses is going to help. But if this is a long-term injury, that could definitely slow things down. Um, DeMarvin Leal had a nice day. Uh, Steeler gets a sack and two tackle losses here. Eric Rowe gets two tackle losses. So lots of stops in the run game for the Dolphins. Cunningham, Steeler, and Justin Jones getting our sacks. Jerome Baker with the pick. Deflections, Baker, Sheffield, and Cunningham. No force Thomas Wilkins goes down to injury, too. Some some tough injuries going on uh, here. I'll have to see if any of these are serious. Um, Jason Sanders gets injured on a 39-yard field goal attempt. Oh, boy. That's brutal. You need to see that. He goes 0 for 1 on the day. J.K. Scott, the punter, comes in and makes one. Uh, Anger here. He said, Igbenogamy gets a return for 11 yards. That's nice. But yeah, what a high scoring, exciting game. Texans and Dolphins dueling it out. Dolphins end up getting the win, uh, trying to win the division. It's still open. Could anybody win it? Uh, they're going to obviously have to uh, put up performance against the Bills week 15. That's going to be their, their uh, big one. Uh, kicker Andrew. Oh, I'm going to look at it right now. It's not kicker, it's Wilkins. He's done for the season, though. So that's tough for them. Uh, but the kicker is fine. He will be back next week. Um, and now let's take a look at the Bears and Jets game. Well, I think we got to control the Bears, right? The Zap attack. The, the Zapster. Do we have another Zappening upon us? I'll stop. I won't stop, but I'll stop. Zappy not on here? Snubbed. All right. Jets, Bears. Here in MetLife, the worst field in the NFL, according to Kelsey. Don't stop the zap. <laughs> zap cap. <laughs> nice, nice, nice. All right. Let's go. Oh, let's go. Touchdown already. 7-0. Jets still can't score. <laughs> Bears up 14-0. <laughs> 13 or 17-0. Uh, the Jets finally score in the second half. Zach Wilson's going to get benched. 24-7. 24-14. Two-score game. And that's the game. Bears get another win up to 4-8 and eight on the season. The Jets are going to be in perfect position to draft <laughs> Bryce Young. Oh, man. Bailey Zappi strikes again. Anti-tank commander Bailey Zappi. Let's go. Zappi makes me happy too, man. <laughs> oh, man. Let's take a look at the scoring summary here. Cole Komet, touchdown from Zappi. We got a Montgomery run and the Santos field goal. 17 nothing and a half. Uh, it is the Jets leading the charge at the end. Mark Ingram getting the run. Komet is second touchdown of the day. We have Galp and Davis uh, touchdowns, but the Cairo Santos field goal gives them enough of an edge that if the Jets got the ball back, they would have needed a touchdown. Um, so, clutch field goal there. Zach Wilson, I mean, he throws three picks. I mean, that's what it is, right? He, you know, six yards in completion, he's moved the ball well, but... Yeah, it's a 65% completion percentage, three picks. That's that's the difference. I mean, you can't can't keep turning the ball over at this rate. Uh, Zappi didn't have exactly a spectacular Zappi day. You know, it just isn't the 300 yards, five touchdowns on 80% completion percentage Zappi we know and all love, of course. But this is the kind of Zappi that's winning football games and wins are the most important QB stat, as we all do know. Rushing attacks, nobody was particularly good. Reese only gets three yards per carry. Uh, Damian Pierce off the bench, 4.5 is the is going to be probably the difference. Zappy couldn't manage positive yards on the ground. Michael Gallup, 14 for 189 in the touchdown. Ooh. Ah. This is crazy. These receiver games are awesome. They're going to play the league's going to be all receivers this week. Drake London getting 71 yards to him back up for him. Cole Komet, two touchdowns. Um. Yeah, Corey Davis getting that touchdown to you. Yeah, blocking here, Thune. Wow, Terrence Steele, a bad day. Same with Peters. 
both these tackles for the I mean the Bears pass rush on backups is absolutely torching these tackles. <laughs> Three sacks and two sacks allowed. Montgomery allows a sack. Miller, uh, Will Hernandez, and Joe Thune each allow a sack. This guy gets nine tackles, good for him. Blau Nichols, William Golston, two tackle for losses here, and then a bunch of guys here at one. Travis Gibson, GOAT. Zach Allen, GOAT. Two tackles, or two sacks each. Roquan getting one. William Golston with a one, like I said. Mark Davenport, John Franklin Myers. Trayvon Walker gets a half sack. Quentin Williams with a half sack as well. Kair Elam, the rookie, gets the pick. He is injured, so we'll have to see how serious that is for them. He's been playing pretty well, I feel, in this game. He's not been quite putting up the sauce um, or the Trent McDuffie sort of interception numbers uh, or well, the touchdowns in McDuffie's case, but he's having a pretty good year you know, for a rookie corner, especially Kenneth Murray gets the pick and Jalon Johnson as well. Uh, let's see, deflections, Roquan, Devin Bush gets one. Eddie Jackson forces the fumble and recovers it, so good for him. No blocked, no safeties, and no defense touchdowns. Kicking, uh, looks like just the two field goals for Cairo. Yep, two field goals, long of 30. Not a very busy day for either kicker, but hey, you only get the kicks, you can get the opportunity to kick. Red man, pretty good, 50 yards in that. I mean, Pat O'Donnell's still pretty good. He's been one of the better punters in the ACFL. Barrios, 12-yard return, nice for him. But yeah, Zach Wilson losing him another game. Tank commander Zach Wilson. Moving on. Let's see if there's any new injuries for the Bears. One new injury. Oh, shoot. That's a box score. This, I do this all the time, guys. I'm usually just not recording when I do this stuff. It's really annoying, this, like, screen. I wish I could just, like, go where I want. Yeah, this injury report is so bad. <laughs> I don't even know. Kyrie Elam, five weeks. So bad. He's going to be gone for the last, over the last two weeks. This is going to be four weeks. You got to take one off of all these. But oh my God, look at this injury report, guys. <laughs> so bad for them. We'll take a quick look at the Jets injuries, see if they had any. Because we're here. Why not? Nope, they did not. Just down their corners. Lucky. Anyway, Atlanta. We're, we'll, head, we'll head to the uh, the dirty south here. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I heard fucking Ludacris say that. That's why I said it. But whatever. I'm easily influenced by the media I consume. That's why I don't talk to Acorn very much. I just bounce him around different teams. I mean, I don't do that, of course. Falcons jump out to a 7 nothing lead. Washington answers. Washington's been on a bit of a run here. Uh, they could definitely use another win just to feel good about their season. Atlanta, a 10-7 to lead. Washington takes the lead. Touchdown game. Atlanta ties it up. Atlanta touchdown lead. And Atlanta pulls it off. A big-time win for the Falcons. They're going to gain a game in the division. Or they're going to keep their game in the division they had. That's true. I only know owners. That's a good point. Uh, he's been in the stream. I don't know. Kind of weirdo. I don't know how we got him. Uh, but Falcons taking this one 24-17. to Take a look at the scoring summary. Uh, Williams run, Curtis Samuel at 43 yard a touchdown, uh, 10 to three and a half for the coup, 56 yard. Oof, what a kick! Gibson run. He did in fact do better. That is true. Cade York, 50 yarder, gives him the lead. But Robbie Anderson and Keelan Cole getting a run, uh, giving us the Falcons uh, difference they needed in the player stats. Now Matt Ryan, 100 passer rating, one touchdown, no picks, 69 nice percent completion percentage. 305 yards. Trey Lance didn't turn the ball over a ton. Probably could have used, you know, 18 completions instead of 25, but not a bad day for the young QB. Has had a bit of a uh, up and down season, we'll call it, but maybe starting to turn a new leaf. Matt Ryan, same, has been pretty, pretty up and down, but had a nice week here. Cordell Patterson, nice game on the ground. Williams, Damian Williams, too, uh, had a nice day. So pretty much splitting the carries down the middle. <laughs> they didn't do that with Elijah Mitchell. 
uh, Terry McLaurin, and I think Curtis Samuel, 110 yards, obviously held by that 46-yarder. Uh, Brandy Cooks, new Falcon, has been playing pretty well for them. Keelan Cole, 77 yards, leads away for the Falcons. Jimmy Graham still doing his thing. Um, and yeah, we'll move blocking. Wow, Jackson Carmen. Not a good day at the office for him. Coming in at guard uh, into the defense. Cole Holcomb, 10 tackles. Uh, Going to lead both sides. Tackle off here. Agua leads it two. Got a few guys here at one. Nice Greg Rousseau day as he has two sacks and a tackle for loss. Grady Jarrett gets two sacks. Chris Barnes. How do you say his first name? I feel like I've only said it in my head and not out loud. This is not right. Anyway, Agba, a sack, two tackle for losses here. Chase Young with a sack as well. Uh, no interceptions, obviously, we saw that. Deflections here. Boye, Terrell, McDuffie, Zion, Barnes, and Henderson with the deflections. Foyasad Alokun gets the force fumble, but it was not recovered, so there's an empty force fumble there. You know, they got a block. Tyler Clark gets a blocked punter field goal. Guessing a field goal. Um, oh, thank you. Uh, you really you really helped me out there. We'll see if who... I'm guessing it's going to be this field goal here. 39-yarder. Uh, he wouldn't miss that. Yep. Had a field goal blocked. So makes a 56-yarder. Gets that one blocked. Uh, Trust Way had a nice day. Oh, maybe Morstead did too. Both of their opportunities uh, taking advantage of them. McKissick had a 25 yard turn, that's pretty normal. Six yard turn is pretty normal as well. So that is going to do it for our game. Falcons taking the taking another game. That's going to move them to seven and five, I believe, putting them in uh, the number three seed in the NFC. Uh, so good for them. And with the uh, Bucks losing, that just leaves them against the Panthers, who they probably will have a tiebreaker over. So uh, that's that's good for them coming into a big game against Pittsburgh. They can walk into the bye. Eight and five, and really in great position in their division. Um, so that's good for them. Love to see that. What well, is Seattle as the Seahawks are going to take on the um, Raiders? Raiders have had definitely a rough season. The AFC West has kind of ran uh, ran them over <laughs> in a lot of ways. Uh, but we'll see if they can turn things around uh, against the Seahawks too have kind of gotten run over by their own division in to a degree, but their division has really fallen off. So the door is open. Only six wins is the division winner um, at the moment for Seattle. So they can get the five wins today. Uh, sit a game back of Arizona, who they did lose to twice. So they're going to have to outright pass Arizona. But um, it's not it's not hopeless yet because no one really wants to win this division or really be a wild card team in the NFC either. Uh, but three nothing to start. Vegas ties it up, and Vegas takes a touchdown lead. That's been all Vegas after that field goal, 17-3. to Turnovers in the middle. Seattle makes it a one-score game in the fourth. The Raiders push the lead to 10, back down to 7. Seattle ties it. Raiders got overtime, and the Raiders won it? How? Didn't Seattle have the ball? Did I miss something? Was I take it flipped around? I think I thought Seattle had the ball. Did Raiders have the ball and I just fuck it up? All right, let's take a look at the score summary. So yeah, we got the Carlson field goal, Prayer field goal, Jacobs run, Marquise Brown touchdown gives them the lead, but then DK Metcalf touchdown, Traquan Smith touchdown, and then a Valdez Scanlon touchdown. So yeah, they must have just had the ball and it must have gotten flipped around. Uh, but Valis Kinsley the walk-off touchdown from Derek Carr. Uh, and pretty good day for quarterbacks. Carr throws the only interception on the day. 65% completion percentage for 371 yards. Russell Wilson had a pretty similar day. Doesn't have a touchdown, but a little bit worse. Completion percentage, a little bit better. Average yards per throw. So both quarterbacks playing pretty well. Um, hasn't been always the case for them. Josh Jacobs gets 97 yards on the ground. So definitely the running game for the Raiders. The Real edge for them as uh, Jacobs puts up another nice day. The receiving game, Valdez Scantling, 132 and touchdown on nine grabs. Brown, 123 and a touchdown on 10 grabs. Metcalf leads the way for Seattle, nine for 140 and a touchdown. Rick Boyle, Trey Smith, 67, 68 yards. Smith gets that uh, overtime forcing touchdown. Waller comes back and doesn't do much, 48 yards for them. 
Lock hit 50, had a bit of a slower day. Pascal gets injured, as well as Hassan Haskins gets injured too. Uh, for the blocking here, Dwayne Brown lost two sacks. Hopkins lost one. Damian Lewis lost one. So definitely the pressure too from the Raiders, a big part of this game. Pratt and Brooks lead the way in tackles. Ronnie Harrison, two tackle losses here. Isaiah Thomas stopped playing basketball for a bit to go ahead and get some tackle for losses for Seattle. Sacks here, Max Crosby and Christian Barmore each got two. So his first game back, or second game back, Barmore, um, from an injury he suffered very early in the year. Nice to have him back. Dude, I don't know who Terrence Brook is. <laughs> Jamal Adams gets the interception. He had a really hot start to the year, Adams, but uh, kind of cooled off in the middle. Good to see him get back on the interception train. Darnold, or Darby with two pass deflections. O'Shane Jimenez forces and recovers the fumble. Giants legend. He also blocks a punt or field goal. That probably could have been the same thing. Um, we'll have to see what it probably was. I mean, Prater does miss two 50-yarders. Carlson misses the 30-yarder. I'm guessing Carlson's the one who got it blocked. He did not. He just missed the 30-yarder outright. Rough day for the kicking since none of them got blocked, which means we had the Michael Dixon punt blocked. Uh, that's tough for him, and could have been a big swing, for sure. I don't know when that took place, but whatever it did, it could have been a, a big swing. So yeah, Raiders win this one, 26-20. Got a few more games left here. How are we doing on time? Oh yeah, we're doing good. 26 minutes, we'll be fine. All right, we got New Orleans versus San Francisco. Fumbles equal fun. Exactly right. Fumbles do indeed equal fun. Especially when they're blocked punts, right? Blocked punts are the most fun kind of fumbles there are. All righty. Niners taking on. Oh, you know what I forgot to do? I forgot to do something for the Saints. Gosh, it's been a week, I tell you. All right, I got to flip to the Saints and... uh add them a running back to make sure they have them because they uh, had some injuries that uh, have pushed their depth and I didn't have them have Carlos Hyde for some reason. Let's hope he's a free agent because it's going to be harder to find him if he's not. Yep, there he is, Carlos Hyde. Let's cut. It was Prentice was the guy who was playing the shouldn't have. Okay. Let's ride. Broncos country. Let's ride. All right. Saints Niners. It's a game that got flexed out. Let's see if they can... Uh, Say, hey, maybe we should have been the game and not the Titans Bengals beatdown that we saw. Yeah, why not? Actually, I'm not, but sure, I'll do some high knees. Defensive match San Francisco strikes first. New Orleans gets three. 14 to 10 at half. New Orleans a quick drive. New Orleans cuts it to five. And they ice it. San Francisco is going to hold on to win it. They avoid the fate that the Rams face by losing to the Saints. Saints are going to remain our top pick. Go to the Dolphins. <laughs> uh, as uh, they can, they keep losing close, but they keep losing. Uh, I'll take a look at the scoring summary here. Uh, Hurd, touchdown catch. Room. He's been awesome for them. And we got an IU touchdown. Ray Ray in the cloud. Uh, touchdown there in the second quarter. Big second quarter for both teams. Moser, the run, and the Kamara touchdown catch. They failed the two-point conversion. Set them behind the eight ball. Uh, Justin Fields, 101, passer rating, two touchdowns, one pick. Crawford can only manage to complete 44% of his passes, but do, does find two touchdowns and no picks in those. Uh, just needed to be a lot more consistent down to down. Uh, rushing attack here, Kamara, 3.8 for carry. Trey Sermon, 
Good for them. Receiving Charlie Warner. Warner? Warner, sorry. Uh, gets in there for 47 yards on six grabs. Debo Samuel, 91. Ayuk has the touchdown with Hurd as well. Marcus Callaway, 45 yards. Raven McLeod, 65, and touchdown. Jamar Chase still can't get him as involved. Briley Moore stops to get 28 yards. You got Swain, 17. Trent Williams allows the sack, as well as Mostert and Tyrell Crosby for the tackles. McDougal leads the way. Malik Jackson, Brian Burns, and two tackle for losses each. The sacks, Uchenna Nwosu, Arnold Evichetti, and Sheldon Rankins each getting a sack. Troy Pride gets the pick. C.J. Gardner-Johnson, Scarlett, and Norman with the deflections. And that's going to be it for our defense here. Looks like Lutz makes a 49-yarder as our only field goal attempt of the day. Punting. It was fine. 46-yard 46 46 net for both of them. Dio had a 13-yard punt return. Pretty solid for him. But yeah, Fields executes, wins them a close game. Jimmy Garoppolo couldn't complete enough passes to keep things moving, and uh, that's going to be the story of the game. We got one more game, I believe. We've got our Eagles and Packers game, the game that we have all been dreading as we get to listen to Acorn or someone talk about the Packers. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I remember to put the force loss on, so it's good. Just kidding. I don't hate Acorn enough to do that to him. Those weren't your players, Acorn. Also, you didn't send in a game plan, so you don't get it before. Green Bay only mustered three points in the first quarter. Three to three ball game. And Philly's gonna take a three, a six to three lead, an eight to three lead, eleven to three lead in the third quarter. Oh my God, eighteen to three. Packers down a score. Philly's gonna win this one, twenty-five to ten. What an ugly game. <laughs> I mean, the safety was eight to three. I was like, let's go. Got the eleven to three score, and then the Eagles actually just woke up and started playing really good football. And oh man, Eagles absolutely dominating this one. The Packers' offense, I mean, what's going on? Like, they feel so good, but, like, they aren't, like, being really good. <laughs> I don't get it. Wow. Oh, 35% completion percentage. What is going on? And Holy shite. We got the Myers field goal, Elliot, Elliot, the safety to start the second half. I and mean, that's when you know it's over, right? If you're, like, getting a safety, <laughs> like, it's just, you know it's not your day. Yeah, Elliot Fiegel, Goddard, Devontae Adams gets a 45-yarder, probably their only good play of the entire day, and a fun touchdown run. Uh, Hurts to the 102 passer rating, one touchdown, no picks. Rodgers completes 12 of 34 for 153 yards, one touchdown, one pick, 4.5 yards per attempt. That's like a good running back day, and he had 45 of those 153 on one completion. That's brutal. That's a bad day. Hertz was pretty good overall. Not exactly world-beating, but he was not as bad as Rodgers, and that's all it took today. But he did get 80 yards on the ground, so that part of it definitely helps. Uh, Sanders, same yards for carry, but they're able to sustain a good rushing attack. A.J. Dillon leads the way for the Packers, which means that we probably have an injury, right? He doesn't even show us a... I wonder if he had a catch and he got hurt. Rodgers, 26 yards on the ground. Nice for him. Goddard, 126, and the touchdown. Ramon Ross, 6 for 52. Devontae Adams is 4 for 82, and the touchdown so extends his lead uh, over the NFL for Offensive Player of the Year, probably. Kadarius Toney gets injured, so probably could have played a part in it. Two catches, 20 yards. Not exactly a ton of depth for this team. Yeah, we don't even see Aaron Jones here either. So he must have gotten injured blocking or something. Uh, we'll have to see what that ends up being. 
uh, four stacks allowed here. Mylotta and Evan Neal each allow at least one. Uh, Mylotta allows two. Haynes allows one sack. So Packers really getting after it in the pass rush. Hitchens, 10 tackles. Demarcus Walker. Kingsley Kiki, I know who that is. Two tackle losses. Anthony Jennings, Kwon Williams, Adrian Amos, Devin White, Micah Parsons, Corey Peters, Quinton Jefferson, and Jay Spear Paul. He's getting tackled for losses here. Quinton Jefferson has two sacks. Gary and Gardick each with one. Thomas Graham with a pick. I literally do not know what the fuck happened in this game because there are so many random players doing random things that I have no idea how this happened. I know your fatigues almost are good. I checked them. Corey Peters is the one who forced the safety. It is harder to check them without game plans, though, because I tend to go in and leave. But <laughs> I'll make sure they're good. Jordan Berry had a nice day, 47.8 net. But yeah, well, uh, we'll take a look at the old injuries here. Uh, but we're going to end the recap here. Uh, another ACFL week in the books. We're ending it on a nice little upset of the Packers. Everybody's favorite upset of the Packers. And you know something fun about this upset of the Packers, right? The Packers now have four losses. And you know a team that's kind of fun that has five losses? Yes, yeah, right. It's the Detroit Lions led by the Golfins. The Golfins is coming for you, Green Bay. Do you, feel, do you hear the footsteps, Green Bay? Do you hear them? Because they're right behind you. <laughs> Sorry. I'll see you guys in the stats.